I invite you to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
First reading is from Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, 
and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each with his work, 
and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time, we invite all of our angel choir children to please come forward. Following that, we will have our children. <laughs> but first, our angel choir. <laughs> children. Good morning, Pastor Bill. Great to see you today. Uh, today is one of those special days in the church. It has a special name. Today is Christ the King Sunday. So who knows what a king is? What's a king? You know what one is when you see him, right? Yeah. Yeah, somebody sits on the throne, somebody that's in charge, right? The king is the one that makes the rules and, and rules over other people, right? So what would be a good king? A good king would be someone who does a good job taking care of the people, that he loves the people and helps the people and serves the people, makes sure they have everything they need, right? That's a good king. Well, 
one of the ways the Bible talks about Jesus is that he is a king. In fact, he is the greatest king that ever has been or ever will be. He is Jesus Christ, the king, the greatest king of all. And he is the greatest king of all because he loves us and he takes care of us. He came to us to take care of all of our needs, the biggest needs that we have. Uh, and the most important thing he did is he gave his life on a cross. He died on the cross for us. And when he died on the cross, he had, well, I meant to ask you one other thing is, what if not only do kings sit on a throne, what do they wear on their head? A crown, that's right. But when Jesus died on the cross, he had a special crown. He was a crown of thorns. But after he was raised from the dead on the Easter Sunday, uh, he now we say he has the crown of Christ the King. He is our King. He is the good, the best King there ever is. Okay? And so Jesus wants to be the King of our lives, of your life and my life. And how does he do that? How is he King of our lives? By, by teaching us and, and helping us, right? And showing us how to live, right? What's best for us. And so where do we learn about Jesus' teaching? We'll learn about it in heaven, that's right. And before we get to heaven, we learn about it maybe in Sunday school or... Yeah, vacation Bible school and Sunday school and, and sometimes in Christian schools through the Bible and through prayer, right? And so Jesus wants to be king of your life. And so I want you to see, I have the banner, we have a special banner for today because whenever you see a cross, it has what? What is this right here? That's a crown. You see a crown on a cross, then you know that represents Christ the King, right? So whenever you can see a cross with a crown on, you can say, oh, that reminds me, Jesus wants to be the King of my life, and he's given me faith, so he is the King of my life. We're, anybody see another cross anywhere with a crown on it? Any other place we might see around here in the church where there's a cross and a crown on it? A cross with a crown on it. Hmm. Let's see. Where could one be? What's on my chest? There you go. Very good. That stands for Christ. Really can. All right. All right. So let's pray about that. Let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and bow our heads, and let us pray. Dear Jesus, please be Christ the King of my life. Thank you for loving us you for and giving us faith. In your name we pray. Name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, good job. Y'all remember, Christ the King. Whenever you see that crown on the cross, there he is, Christ the King. <coughs> All right. November 21st already, and we have made it to the last Sunday in our liturgical year, and we end it on a high note, Christ the King Sunday. We end our church year saying, you know what, we've made it all the way through the year of full of scripture lessons all throughout the Bible, through the life of Christ, and, and taking in all that Christ has come to do for us, and today we celebrate that, yes, Christ is our King. He is the Lord and ruler of all. Now let's just say we were to treat uh, today, the end of this liturgical year, like it's the end of a school year, thinking about all the things that we have learned. And maybe the message today could be like some kind of a commencement address for us, the church. What knowledge might we take with us as we go out into the world being the church that God has called us to be? What encouragements would we 
good for us to hear today, having learned all that we have and having the calling that we have to go forward and be the church. Now we know that we come, you know, next Sunday, we're back here again and we begin a new liturgical year with the first Sunday of Advent. And with that, it's a wonderful blessing for us to always know that we always keep learning, that the Holy Spirit is always at work with us, helping us to take in all that God wants us to know and live from his word as we begin another liturgical year. But for today, we'll consider what might be some Christ the King Sunday encouragements for us to leave this place here today and go be the church that God has called us to be. And we'll get our source of inspiration for that from our gospel lesson in Mark in chapter 13. So in Mark 13, in our text for today, Jesus is talking about the future times, the times when Christ is going to come again. The Son of Man will return. And it sounds intriguing and kind of eerie, very mysterious. And that's really one of the points that Jesus makes as he's talking about these future times, that there is mystery as to when that day will be. But Jesus wants us to keep focus on our mission of following him and proclaiming his truth. So here's our first encouragement that we get from the church today. And it comes in verse 29. Jesus says, he is near. Know that he is near. Jesus is talking about all of these signs that will take place when the Son of Man will return. And if Jesus were to talk to us in this passage like we might talk today, he might say, look guys, not to be like dramatic or anything, but in those days, the sky is literally going to fall down. And the Son of Man is going to break in with power and glory. And, and then Jesus tells a parable. And he's using an image that his disciples would have been familiar with to help them understand what he's trying to teach them. So we have the parable of the fig tree. And this fig tree, unlike other trees that would have been around at the time, you can look at them and know when the seasons are going to change. So Jesus says, as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. You know that he is near. That's our first encouragement. And look around us, even, even in the simple, familiar things, we feel Christ's presence right near, right with us. There is hope. There's tangible hope in feeling and knowing that Jesus is near to us. And when Jesus comes again, he will return as our valiant and victorious king. And for those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we get to live each day in the here and now, taking in the impact that Jesus has on our lives right now. And while we wait for his return, Jesus reminds us, that he is near. He is going to be near. Amidst all the chaos and evil and sin, he is near, he is victorious, and he is our king. Many of you know that my husband, Derek, works in law enforcement, and in his line of work, he gets the benefit of being able to work regular business hours. He doesn't have to do <coughs> shift work every few days, and just the way his schedule works, one night each week, he works late into the night, going out and doing all kinds of field work, a little bit more of the dangerous side of his job. And so for me, every night, late at night, when he comes home on those nights of each week, the sound of hope to me is the sound of his boots hitting the front porch steps. I love when I can hear his car door shut and the dogs wake up and their ears perk up and I can hear that storm door Creek open. It's the sound of hope. Yes, my husband has made it back home safe. He is near to us, to our family. Good, good feelings when I know that he is near to us. And that's the same kind of feeling that Jesus wants us to hold on to when he tells us that he is near. Know that he is near. Jesus teaches us, remember that, remember that fig tree and how you can look at its leaves 
and be able to tell that something big is happening around us, that the seasons are changing. Well, Jesus wants us to remember that he is near. Even when the sky is falling all around us, he is near. And that's a good, good thing for us. So encouragement number one, know that he is near. A second encouragement for us is that his words will not pass away. And that comes to us in verse 31. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Think of all of the things that we just generally put our faith into, maybe some kind of a misplaced faith, really. All the things we put our faith, our time, and, and energy into, that if we think about it, are really just temporary things that are not going to last. And even that kind of temporariness it even affects our culture, especially our younger generations. It gets, you know, we, we want to put our faith in all kinds of things, and, and we accidentally, you know, put the member in, put our faith in the wrong things. We even, you know, try to put our faith in in people, other people, and sometimes we get let down, and that doesn't feel good. I know, like for our younger generations, there's this thing now in our culture that is called FOMO. Maybe you've heard of that before. FOMO, the fear of missing out. It's a thing where you, people get afraid to commit to hanging out with someone or spending time with folks because they're afraid that if they commit to doing something, they might miss out on something better that might come along after they make that plan. So it's hard to it's hard to depend on people. We get let down when we put our faith in other things and other people. Jesus is different. And that's a good thing. That's an encouragement for us. Jesus says he is near with us. And Jesus says his words will never pass away. His word will always be true. That's good, good news for us. Our next encouragement that we have from Jesus today in Mark chapter 13 comes to us in verse 32, when Jesus says, But concerning that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Now, that verse might sound kind of like a warning, or maybe even, I don't know, ominous, but like, you know, no, you might think it's telling us, you know, be scared because this is going to happen. But that's not what Jesus is getting at. Really, he wants to relieve a burden that we might very easily put upon ourselves, trying to figure out when is Jesus going to return? We want to know. We want to know all the information, all the details, the exact time, so we can be in our, on our best behavior, I suppose, when that is going to happen. But Jesus gives us this word of advice in verse 32, really to tell us that it's not our life day to day should not be about trying to figure out when that day will come, because there's no way that we could know. Jesus said, even the Son doesn't know, only the Father knows when that day or that hour will happen. So don't get distracted or worried trying to come up with when that exact time will be. We're not to think that one of us might have some kind of special prophetic powers to know when the Son will return. Only the Father knows. <coughs> think about all the hugely popular movements throughout history that have garnered media attention of people thinking that you know the end times are, are happening right now and then things are pointing to that and think about and the, when the year 2000 was coming up, Y2K, that was a really big deal for our culture and I was, I don't mean to offend anyone, but I was only nine years old at the time, so <laughs> I was like, I was, you know, just a young child going to worship with my family and and I remember, though, being encouraged at that time and not having to live in fear because my pastor was good about reminding us, hey, God, God is in control. You might not know what's happening, but, but God is in control of all of this. Think about even whole cultures of people that were very intelligent in a lot of ways. Like the Mayans, who had predicted the world was going to end December 23rd, 2012. He made a movie about that, I think. But they were wrong. They didn't know. But the burden of trying to figure out when will that hour be 
that burden of trying to figure that out that's taken away from us. Jesus tells us only the Father knows. So we don't have to worry about coming up with that on our own. It's an encouragement to us. Let's let the Father, our good Father, take care of determining that for his creation. In the meantime, let's be ready as the church. Let's be ready for when Christ will return. Okay, so how is that encouraging? Let's be ready. How do we do that? What does it mean to be ready as the church for Christ to come again? Because we don't know when it will happen. How can we do it? Jesus says, stay awake. Stay awake. We don't want Christ to come back and find us all snoozing, right? Find us, find us all asleep, maybe complacent or not doing the things that God, that we know that God has called us to do. So the encouragement here when Jesus says stay awake is that church, let's keep on being the church. Let's keep working toward our mission every day because we have a purpose as a congregation to serve this community, to worship Christ, and to follow him. We have that really worded beautifully in our vision statement for St. Peter's is to be disciples of Christ who make disciples for Christ. That's our vision. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to go as a church. And it speaks to this whole notion of staying awake, keep doing the things that God has called us to do as a congregation, as his church. So be disciples of Christ who make disciples for Christ. Another way of saying, follow Jesus. And help others to follow him too. Now, not to, to pat ourselves on the back, but just a word of encouragement that St. Peter's, we're already doing that. We're already working on our vision. We're already doing the things that God has called us to do, even in the near future. If you think back to just last Sunday, we had our annual congregational meeting. That's an important meeting to have where we not only put together our you know, approve our spending plan for the next year. But practically speaking, that's a way for us to get together, talk things out, and make sure that we're ready to serve our God-given purpose in the upcoming year, to keep doing the things that God has called us to do as a church. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. After all, Christ is the King.
words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came out from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Everlasting God, grant that your church's congregations may be faithful to the mission to which you have called them. Keep us all steadfast in our willingness to lift high the cross and proclaim boldly that it is from that symbol of defeat where you rule and reign king of all creation forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Another cycle of the church year has ended, reminding us that our time in the present world will also end in you. Teach us to number our days so that we may live in the confidence that you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever, Christ the King of truth. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, ruler of us all, you desire all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Let your blessing rest on your civic leaders and all whom you have placed in positions of authority. Grant that, in spite of the divisions in our country that are so deep and so emotional these days, that in the midst of this we can keep our eyes on you, and grant that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives, godly and respectful in every way, free to pray and free to work in your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O holy God, as a sign of your holy reign, grant that this congregation would identify with the suffering, those sorrowing, and the sick in both our local and global communities. By your Spirit, empower us to seek ways to serve and reach out to those on the fringes in loving and tangible ways. And now we pray especially for those in need of your comforting and healing Holy Spirit. We do pray for the family and loved ones of Zach, the family and loved ones of Larry, the family and loved ones of Rocky, the family and loved ones of Mike. We pray for Bill, Barbara, Debbie, Nancy, Robbie, Harper, those listed in our worship bulletin this day and those we now name before you in our hearts and minds. For those we have named and for their needs we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Christ, who is the King of all that exists. Amen. 
May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We share the peace with one another. In whatever socially distant way you think is appropriate. And at this time, we ask the Sunshine Choir to come forward to the help of the end. Sunshine Choir coming forward now. To think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart and
mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, oh Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Thank you. 
body of Christ for you. The body of Christ given to you. The body of Christ given for 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 you. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the true body of Christ given for you. The 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 blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. God bless you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Almighty God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.